Hello and welcome. You are watching Big Picture with me, Vishal Dahia, and today we're going to talk about P75I or Project 75 India. Now, what exactly is a P75I is something uh, we will discuss in the next uh, 25 odd minutes to give you a sort of a background on P75I. What actually the government has done is uh, kick-started the process of indigenously manufacturing six conventional submarines, modern conventional submarines, and this process has been kick-started by issuing RFP for these six submarines in the SP model, that is the strategic partnership model, again, an important aspect of the entire defense uh, indigenization process. Uh, we'll look at all these aspects. We'll try and understand why these submarines are important to us. Also, what is so special about uh, these uh, six modern conventional submarines being built under P-75I and the strategic aspect here as well. And for more on this, we're joined by two distinguished experts. Let me first uh, introduce them to you. Beginning with, we have with us uh, retired Vice Admiral Shekhar Sinha with us, uh, strategic expert, uh, somebody who knows a lot about uh, the strategic aspects of uh, these uh, platforms. And we also are joined by uh, retired commander Abhijit Singh. He is head of the Maritime Policy Initiative uh, at ORF. Welcome, both of you gentlemen. Let me begin with you, uh, Admiral Sinha. And let's start by understanding first uh, a bit more about Project 75 India, that is P75I. Well, the project is uh, part of India's uh, submarine building plan. India had a 30-year submarine building plan by which uh, all the six submarines which are under build should have already been sailing and it should have been followed by the uh, submarines now for which the RFP has been issued. Uh, it has gone through a lot of ups and downs, uh, Vishal. Uh, firstly, the you know, when it was decided or AON was given the acceptance of necessity in the year 2011, um, you know, the whole system was in a manner uh, not very straightforward. It was said that, you know, we will get two submarines uh, from the OEM directly. Mm -hmm. uh, the other three will be built in collaboration at the MDL and one will be built in uh, Vishakapatnam. So to my mind, it was a no-go at that time itself because you cannot create infrastructure in two shipyards and that's going to increase the cost of uh, submarine. At that point in time with the current uh, sort of uh, costing, it would have exceeded more than 50,000 crores, uh, which we see that now 10 years down the line, it is, uh, you know, 10,000 crores lesser. Mm -hmm. So I think the uh, that is number one. The second thing is that, you know, our submarine force has uh, not been what it should have been. Uh, but the scorpions, which are now rolling out, which are sailing now, uh, they have added to the, you know, the underwater sort of uh, power. Uh, you know, the stealth submarines are known for stealth. Uh, but the good thing is that now uh, both the Indian companies, the Larson and Tubro, and uh, the you know MBA. the Mazgaon Dock Limited, the RFP has been given to them. They will find their own strategic partners. In fact, five have already been shortlisted by the government. Out of those five, uh, one each will probably tie up with one of these, and then they will start doing the uh, bidding, the time at time taken for the manufacturing. And uh, what will be the relative cost of these two people, uh, these two shipyards? And depending upon what the uh, the you know the which meets the the naval staff requirement, which meets the operational requirement, the big difference from the previous submarine uh, Vishal is going to be the air independent propulsion system, uh, which is going to be a fuel cell technology. And in all probability, I am told that the DRDO has already got one successful uh, successfully tried out. So hopefully uh, that will be there. And the modern technology, meaning that, you know, a lot of electronics upgrade has uh, gone through, uh -huh. uh, you know, after the Scorpion has come into the play. So I think that's all in all is going to be a fairly modern submarine. Uh, but from the time the RFP is floated, Vishal, we are, we are looking at nearly 10 years of time, uh, you know, when the first submarine will roll out. Indeed, it is, uh, uh, you know, a time-taking uh, process and it will... Uh, definitely take that much time. We'll talk about uh, the modern technology aspect as well, AIP and others uh, in, a, in a little while, uh, Admiral Sena. But let me bring in uh, uh, Commander Abhijit here. Uh, from your perspective, Commander Abhijit, if you have to look at, uh, you know, the, the very uh, project itself, P75I, and, and also uh, understand the underlying significance of the SP model here, the strategic partnership model. Yes, right. Uh, 
Let me begin by saying that uh, the uh, Defense Ministry's tender for the P-75I that uh, was uh, released uh, uh, only yesterday, actually, uh, is a long-awaited and, and a long overdue development. Uh, this is something that, to my mind, should have happened uh, way back uh, in perhaps in the second half of the previous decade. But, you know, we were finding some difficulty figuring out our own strategic partnership model. And because of that, uh, there, there have been these delays. The fact is that, you know, this is a follow on project to the P-75, which is itself, uh, which itself has been delayed by a few years at least. Um, but I believe that, you know, there is a larger uh, sort of reality that underlies uh, the this whole discussion or that impinges upon the uh, the discussion of the development of uh, conventional submarines. Uh, one is that uh, this is all happening against the backdrop of China's growing, growing presence in the Indian Ocean region. And for that reason, uh, the Navy is facing some pressure in, uh, in, in sprucing up the, uh, the, the submarine arm. Mm -hmm. uh, submarines has been a deficit with the Indian Navy and a, and a sort of crying deficit with the Navy for a number of years now. And there is a growing sense that if we do not get this technology, if we do not get these undersea assets, we will be left behind and China is going to, in a sense, take over our strategic neighborhood. So that's one, that's a bigger strategic reality. Okay. Uh, but then there's also pressure on the Navy because the chief of defense staff has <clears throat> made clear his intention to prioritize submarines over the aircraft carrier. So uh, the Navy, is, it, to me, seems to have pivoted to the new reality that submarines is the new way to go, which is why there is also a going increased stress on the SSN program, which is the nuclear attack submarine uh, program. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's something the Navy is is increasingly uh, cognizant of. Uh, but, but I'd like to highlight another uh, issue that's important. One is that what are the conceptual underpinnings that are going to define the development of uh, our future submarines. And I believe that, you know, we are faced with a kind of dilemma. One is that oh, we could, uh, you know, uh, get technology that is readily available. So, you know, proven technology, proven platforms, and that's where I think the stress at the moment is going to be, as the Admiral was mentioning. Uh, we are trying to go uh, expedite this whole thing by getting in proven assets. Okay. Uh, but the other is that if we really want the technology uh, that that we believe we will own and that will be ours, we will have to, in some ways, need to develop that technology. That means we will need, you know, platforms that are more customized to our needs, and that means that we will need to then give this some more time. Time for this. So this is a big predicament. Do we give it time and develop the technology that we own, or we go in for technology that is readily available that the original equipment manufacturers will never really transfer to us? Okay. So, you know, as I said, we're really on the horns of a dilemma when it comes to P75I, because we don't want it to go the P75, uh, P75 way. We're, uh, uh, we've, we've, we've burnt our fingers with, uh, you know, with, with pursuing a, a platform that uh, that hasn't quite been delivered in the way that we had envisaged originally. So I think we would we would want this to be a, a new beginning for us. And here I see that uh, we've still not been able to decide, or 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 there is still little clarity on what is the way forward. Okay, okay. And Mil Chana, uh, that's that's quite a very interesting uh, view which has been brought in by Kamar Abhijit Zia. That dilemma as well in terms of you know uh, going in for uh, the technology which is already there or developing our own technology, that aspect. Uh, and, and that, uh, again, brings in, into the picture, you know, this, this entire concept of strategic partnership model, having your own, uh, you know, uh, 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 RFP being issued to have, uh, your, your own indigenous players, uh, and they work in conjunction with uh, uh, the selected OEMs. Well, uh, you know, Vishal, the uh, point is that we have not made uh, diesel submarines on our own. Uh, we have always made it under license or in collaboration with the other countries. And therefore, a lot of these technologies have uh, uh, not come and they have not been transferred. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's not forget that uh, both LNT and the MDL have experience of uh, making submarines, even if it is in collaboration. And therefore, when they tie up with these partners, they also have some responsibility to the Navy and the government uh, that what are they what are they going to uh, get from the OEM is something which is better than what they have been building so far. Okay. So that is number one. 
And secondly, there are only about five, four or five players in the world who make the submarines. So I think that, you know, when you see the list, uh, I'm sure that, you know, the ones which are already on the building block in those countries, I'm sure that the, there will be some negotiation, there will be some talk in getting those technology. How much of technology they will transfer? Well, that is one thing which is a very important aspect which Avijit has uh, brought out. Uh, you know, we do have a warship overseeing teams. We do have, uh, there'll be a lot of negotiation, though the PSUs or non-PSU private sector shipyards are building it, but the Navy will have a Hawkeye on that with all our, you know, design group, our, you know, engineers, our technology experts. I mean, I, they will certainly keep an eye on this. And I think that, you know, we, somewhere we have to begin before we start making everything on our own. Uh, there's a lot of technology of, uh, of the submarine uh, which goes about making the digital submarine. Quite possibly it may not have been given to us, particularly the integration part, Vishal. Because, you know, you can have a, you can have a very good sonar system and not a very good integration with the uh, torpedo. Mm -hmm. And there was, we, we make heavyweight torpedoes. We make uh, our own sonars, but not the submarine sonars. Uh, you know, we make our own electronic warfare system. So let us see how much is the Indian content in this de novo. Okay. That is an important part. For example, if the AIP comes from the DRDO, then we know that we have the technology, some major technology, really. So that, that, that part we'll have to wait and see. Okay. Okay. Since you spoke about uh, AIP as well, one more question before I go back to uh, Commander Abhijit here is, uh, Admiral Sina, if you could uh, tell our viewers, uh, why is AIP so important? You see, when you have a just normal battery-operated diesel submarines, uh, you know, the batteries have a got a life. And the submarines have to very often come to snort depth or maybe come on surface, uh, you know, to charge their batteries because only then the diesel engine can start. And the diesel does the charging of these, uh, the generator does the charging of the batteries. And that happens to be very frequent, particularly the submarine is, you know, cruising underwater silently because the battery gets discharged. Now, to get over that, we have this, what is called the air independent propulsion. In that, they have a fuel cell technology, uh, which permits the batteries to sort of continue functioning with this AIP, mm -hmm. uh, this AIP propulsion, and it does not have to come onto surface or snort. And therefore, it reduces the chances of its detection. Because the moment it comes closer to the surface, we shall, you know, submarine is very prone to detection. And submarine prone to detection after that to hide itself becomes very difficult because it does not move very quickly underwater. And if it gets surrounded by SW forces, the helicopters and the ships, uh, then, you know, they, you can expect that, you know, some damage will be suffered by the submarine. Okay. So I think the AIP is a, a non-nuclear submarine. For a diesel submarine, AIP is the thing which gives it the endurance, which is much longer than what a conventional battery submarine is going to be. Okay, okay. So it basically, uh, you know, uh, empowers uh, the submarine to go ahead and... Uh, stay true to its characteristic of staying hidden, uh, staying uh, under the water for a longer period yeah. there, something which you're pointing out. Uh, uh, coming back to you, uh, Kamana Abhijit, you were earlier in your first response, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, the, the strategic importance, the aspect of strategic importance of having, uh, you know, modern conventional submarines and increasing the number of submarines uh, Indian Navy should have as well. Now, if we have to understand the overall picture, uh, it's, it's, is it just about the Indian Ocean region? Or uh, if we look at the larger maritime policy, uh, which, uh, you know, India has, or the maritime security, uh, you know, metrics there, how, how would you uh, place the importance of having uh, a larger number of submarines and modern conventional uh, submarines in that large number as well? That is a very interesting question, Michelle. Uh, but before I come to the larger strategic discussion of, you know, quality and quantity of what's required in the Indian Ocean and perhaps in the Pacific, I'd like to just pick up a little bit on that very interesting thread of AIP. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, air independent propulsion is the real critical technology. It lies at the core of the submarine discussion. This is what is going to, uh, you know, make the P-75 India stand apart from the P-75 program, or for that matter, any other submarine program. It's going to be the AIP that we need. Now, uh, what's happened in recent days is that it seems uh, that the Indian Navy is not happy with the AIP that the DRDO is developing. Okay. And what the Navy essentially seems to want to convey uh, to the authorities is that what it would like is some form of... Uh, 
uh, fuel cell technology, AIP technology is basically German technology, German, you know, uh, 212s, 214s, they use that technology. That's the kind of uh, an AIP that they want. That is pro that's a proven system. Now, what has further added girls to the mills or sort of, you know, uh, created greater speculation is that MDL recently issued an RFI, which is a request for information on the OEMs. And there it said that it needed a, a, a AIP that has been tested on an operational platform. Mm -hmm. Now, the speculation is that if that is the requirement, it will immediately invalidate, you know, three or four companies that are in the fray. Uh, for instance, the, the, the Spanish company, the Russian, even the, even the French company, Mesma, you know, has not actually been tried out on a, on a Scorpion class. Uh, or you know perhaps that 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 variety of submarines. So so you know again people are asking questions about whether the whether the uh, French also will make the cut. Does this mean that we are simply uh, going to go ahead with either the Germans or the South Koreans uh, who also use some form of fuel uh, fuel cell technology and actually lithium ion uh, uh, batteries? Okay. Uh, but uh, but I think that you know uh, there is no not going to be any sing single disqualifier. Or, 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 you know, uh, one particular clause that might disqualify any of these. What I, what I think is that what's happening really in, in submarines is that all of these companies have their own operational philosophies. And again, we need to come down to the basic fact that we are not simply just buying one platform from, you know, any of these companies. This is an ambitious platform. We want uh, shore and, and engineering support. We need indigenous weapons and sensors. We need AIP. We need vertical launch systems. And if there is so much that we need from these companies, again, the important thing is we need to own the technology. Indeed. And for that, we've got to, again, to look for a way in which we can. But to answer your question very quickly, because I know I've taken a little bit of time. No, no, please go ahead. The, the, the AIP part important. was really, really important as well. And so is the strategic one. The strategic part is an equally important piece of that whole, you know, jigsaw which is that uh, uh, how many submarines do we need and what quality of submarines do we need? Look, the fact is that um, uh, conventional submarines are important, but they are only as important as the nuclear attack submarines. So now we have a plan, not just for these conventional submarines, six submarines, we also have a plan for six attack submarines. The attack submarines, nuclear attack submarines are going to take a long time. There's a long gestation period. They're still on the drawing board. The Navy is very well aware that that kind of technology will take a long time to develop. So I believe the stress at the moment is on the conventional submarines. We might get them in 10 years, maybe 12 years, uh, and we may, we may have some um, defenses. We may spruce up our defenses in the Indian Ocean region. But in the long term, if we want some kind of presence, say perhaps in the Pacific, because that is a part of the whole Indo-Pacific discussion, we will need attack submarines. Our starting point for the discussion is that the Chinese are going to send in their attack submarines, you know, their their uh, uh, Type 93s, 95s, etc., into the Indian Ocean. So we should also have the submarines to send into the the Western Pacific, and that is going to take a long time to develop. Okay. So I think we are in the right direction. We've got we are we are aiming for both. Uh, uh, you know, conventional submarines as, as well as nuclear attack submarines, but I think it's going to take a long time. It's going to take great amount of resources because the SSN program itself is is about sixty thousand crores, and it could it could you know over, over a period of time rise to about seventy to eighty. Will we have the resources? You know, as the CDS has pointed out, that resources is the key constraint we face. So I say that if the aircraft carrier can be put on the chopping block. Why can't one of the submarine programs? And I mean, I'm saying that you know, in the future, there is all possibility that uh, that you know the, the rules of the game might change, and then we might be told that look, you know, you'll have to make two with simply conventional. So, so we're looking at at a very uncertain future. We're uh, we're on the right track, but by no means can we rest on uh, on on the on the achievements that that uh, uh, that we've had so far. I think we're uh, we're going to have to consider the the submarine equation very carefully as we. As, as we move ahead uh, over the next couple of years. Thank okay. you. Okay, okay, fair enough. Uh, let me let me bring in uh, Admiral Sena there as well. Admiral Sena, quite interesting points uh, being brought in by uh, uh, you know uh, Kamar Abhijit there in terms of uh, the submarine equation in the overall uh, uh, maritime security metrics. And when we are looking at it, uh, vis a vis not only uh, IOR that's in the Indian Ocean region uh, but the Indo Pacific as well. You know, submarine will continue to remain a very important operational platform for any Navy in the world. And I think the 
you know, when you say Indo-Pacific, it's a very large area, Visha. And therefore, deployment of these submarines, you know, right up to, let's say, the uh, Pacific and uh, further beyond South China Sea, uh, it, is, it, is, uh, it is a little bit tall order because the nuclear submarines are the only ones which are fit to undertake such long voyages. Uh, but AIP submarines, you know, for our... Uh, uh, for our requirement on the, let's say, in the Arabian Sea and deployed in the Bay of Bengal, uh, more than meets the requirement. Also, on the choke points where we are deployed right now, 24/7 all the time, mm -hmm. and we are we are actually monitoring every ship which is passing through or any submarine which is passing through. They are primarily the attack submarines, and they are not not really uh, so-called the patrol type of submarine. The patrol sub these submarines will go and put themselves down in an area from where they can monitor very large traffic. And if the belligerent country has, if the belligerent country has been identified, uh, then of course they will disturb the, you know, the trade or the warships uh, by taking a shot at them. But essentially, I think for Indo-Pacific, what Avijit was saying is absolutely right. For that, you do require the nuclear submarine. And for that, we still have a lot of distance to travel. But as far as the attack submarines, the diesel submarines for our requirement in the IOR is concerned, I think these submarines which are under built for next 7, 8, 9, 10 years, I think they should meet our requirement. But beyond that, you know, the nuclear submarines will be essential. Okay. Okay. And, and what's, the, what's the number, Admiral Sena? You know, uh, one last question to both of you, starting with you, Admiral Sena. What's the number when we talk about uh, uh, the, the adequate number of submarines which, you, uh, which we, we should have... Uh, both uh, the uh, diesel submarine as well as the SSNs? Uh, you know, Vishal, as per the 30-year submarine building program, we are supposed to have a total of 24 submarines, out of which, uh, you know, right now 12, 13, 14 are in service, six are on the build and six more will come. But what has happened in the meantime is, rather than going beyond into diesel submarines, beyond the 75 India project, the government has approved the six uh, nuclear attack submarines, as uh, Vijit was mentioning. So if you see the capability of uh, attack nuclear submarine, a nuclear attack submarine, you know, it gives them much uh, longer legs at sea. They can stay at sea for longer. Mm -hmm. They can move faster. And therefore, the area in which they can keep an eye is much larger. Okay. So I would think that, you know, for the time being, we should stick to what... Uh, uh, what is in the build. Otherwise, the government plan or the naval plan was to make 24 submarines in 30 years of time. But we are way behind. Okay. Okay. Indeed, uh, uh, time uh, line is something uh, which uh, all of us are wary of. But, uh, Kamana Abhijit, uh, you know, from your perspective, when we talk about numbers, in addition to what we have already, six from P-75, six from P-75I, and perhaps uh, another half a dozen uh, SSNs, should that be enough? Well, I think that what... The plan presently is to have uh, about uh, 18 uh, conventional submarines and six nuclear attack submarines. And that, I think, is a judicious mix because given our realities, the fact that, you know, we basically need submarines at, at the present moment for literal defense. We need it in South Asia. We need it in the Eastern Indian Ocean. And for that, uh, at the Admiral's right, we basically need conventional submarines. But as we become more secure, as our power, our weight, our heft in the international system grows, we are going to be left with little option but to, to embrace some kind of projection strategy. Uh, and that means we will need to send our submarines into the distant seas from that. And what I'm implying is the Pacific. And there we will need nuclear submarines. So we will need at least about four to six nuclear submarines, which is presently what the plan is. Will okay. that grow? It could, perhaps but not at the expense of conventional submarines. I think the conventional submarines, the advantages they offer in the littorals puts them in a completely different bracket from, okay. uh, uh, from uh, nuclear submarines. Our realities, our imperatives demand that we uh, develop uh, conventional submarines. And I think the Navy is completely uh, on, on track and is, 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 uh, is pursuing the right options. We've got to 
first develop a conventional submarine program and then look at uh, nuclear attack submarines. So that's what my sort of take on this is. Okay, okay. So there it is it's all about uh, P-75I and uh, its strategic importance there. Thank you so much, uh, Commander Abhijit, as well as uh, Vice Admiral Sheikh Sina for your views and inputs. Uh, we'll come back again with a different topic. Till then, keep watching. Thank you.